Like Chris Saunders about anywhere. Yeah. The, you see, there's a right there looking yeah, at oh me. Yeah, right, yes, yeah. And then, yeah, he knows he's here. Yeah. <laughs> right. Good morning, uh, everybody, and welcome to what, by my counting, for I'm sure somebody will correct me if it's wrong, is I believe the 31st uh, of our annual AMSAT Space Colloquia. Uh, it's quite amazing to think that this, this started presumably 31 years ago. Uh, goodness knows where the time goes. But anyway, um, welcome. It's very nice indeed to see so many uh, attendees, particularly, of course, a welcome to those that have travelled from overseas long distance. It's very nice to see you here. I, I gather we have something like 70 people uh, over the weekend. Uh, so that's really, really good to see. A few thanks to start with uh, to the teams that have uh, set up uh, all the various events that are, are happening this weekend, uh, the stands, uh, particularly the RSGB who have uh, brought their book stand. Uh, there are a number of demonstrations and, uh, uh, and exhibits and bits to buy even uh, over the weekend. Um, and also, of course, I'd like uh, uh, to give a very um, warm welcome, but also great uh, uh, debt of thanks to Bartag, who are providing the uh, tea. Sorry? Ah, oh, well, just, yeah, there we go. <laughs> That's what happens after 31 years. <laughs> thanks, thanks to the TV bunch at the back. <laughs> no, but seriously, that, that we really do appreciate, because I know it's a, it's a big effort to put it on. It's much, uh, much appreciated. Um, this year has been a, a remarkable year because we have had the Tim Peake uh, Principia mission uh, and I would really like to acknowledge the work and the, well, and the success of the ARIS uh, events that have taken place. Uh, I had the opportunity to go up to number 10 and uh, meet the, the Prime Minister to, uh, where, when Tim Peake was being welcomed back and also meet with Tim and thank him for the effort that he put on uh, during his six months in orbit, not least of all because he put a significant amount of his own personal time into supporting the uh, ARIS activities, um, and he, he was very uh, happy so to do. Uh, it was very interesting. I got a, an invitation to go up to number 10 to, uh, to welcome Tim, and it, on the invitation it said the Prime Minister. Of course, that was when Cameron was Prime Minister. Uh, I just thought it was jolly lucky they didn't put the Prime Minister, then his name, because it turned out to be a new one by the time... Uh, the, uh, the event happened a week later, so yeah, a week is a short time in politics. <laughs> so when you send out your party invitations, don't put your name on it. <laughs> um, since we uh, were here last year, uh, we're going to have a, uh, an update um, on the, the activities here at SSTL and also uh, over at the Surrey Space Centre throughout the weekend. Um, some of you will have an opportunity to go down and have a look at uh, what's going on in our clean rooms. Uh, Last year, just around about, just after the, sorry, just before the colloquium last year, we launched three uh, satellites uh, in our DMC-3 constellation uh, on a PSLV uh, from India. Um, and uh, we were just commissioning those spacecraft at that time. Pleased to say the commissioning went very well. And uh, we've got some really good images uh, back from the, uh, uh, from the spacecraft. Uh, now, I'm stealing thunder from my colleague, Chris, who's going to talk afterwards, but uh, uh, he will touch on this a little bit. Uh, but as you know, the usual adage is, tell people once, then tell them again. So if he shows you the same images twice, you can then uh, look at it more closely. But what I thought I would do just before handing over to Jim, just to warm Jim up here, uh, who's uh, going to give a few housekeeping uh, uh, comments, is to just show you uh, one of the images, if I can manage this uh, correctly, let's try, uh, which is one of the images taken uh, over London. Now, I'm sure, unfortunately, with, you know, when we're doing it and projecting it on VGA and everything, you won't see the full uh, uh, glamour of it, but if we, if I do it right, if we now uh, zoom in on this, if I can manage to do it, you can get some idea of the imagery, and again, if I can move it across, we can have a... <laughs> Have a look here at I can and you can have a look at uh, HMS Belfast here on the in the corner. So 
Uh, this is just to give you some idea of some of the, the image quality that's been coming down from this Constellation satellites, which we were just commissioning when you were here uh, last year. And uh, at the end of this year, we'll be launching another one in this series and alongside a radar satellite, all of which Chris will tell you more about in just a moment. So with that, I'd just like to, uh, again, thank you for coming. Welcome. Hope you enjoy the weekend. I look forward to uh, uh, chatting to you over the weekend. And I will hand over to my glamorous assistant, uh, Jim. <laughs> well, I live in hope, Jim. You know, one, so, do, so do I, Martin. One of, these day, one of these days, I will have a glamorous assistant, but not yet. It's, uh, it appears. So hang on. Let me give you the microphone, Jim. OK, thank you. Thanks very much. Good morning, everybody. Um, just a few admin announcements. Um, if you want a sandwich for lunch, please book it at the reception just here. Uh, same as last year, six pounds for a sandwich and a bottle of drink and a crisp. I think get a back packet of crisp, but you need to do that sort of fairly soon so that they get a chance. Eleven o'clock. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Um, the deal is for anyone who hasn't been before. I think I've got um, most. Sorry, I've got most of the um, subs in. Um, if you're visiting for the day and you haven't prepaid on the AMSAT website, you, you owe me £10, <coughs> for which you get a badge. I think, looking around, I think I've got most of them, but it, uh, it provides, it, we pay the hotel for the hire of this room and the others, and it also covers your tea and coffee for the day. So if you could do that, that would be um, appreciated if you haven't already done so. Um, I should mention the RSGB bookstore, which is outside. They're leaving at 3 o'clock, and uh, they haven't been for a couple of years, and I managed to persuade them. No, I asked them again, and they very kindly turned up. So if you want to buy any books from the RSGB bookstore, please do so by 3 p.m. Uh, today, or you will miss out. But they'll be there over lunch and the tea break and things. Um, the other thing, I've just been told that there is a AMSAT Wi-Fi system, um, which is called... Graham's gone. AMSAT UK Guest. AMSAT UK Guest. And the password is satellite, if you want to avail yourself of that. Um, if you haven't got a hotel one, I think my hotel one seems to be working. Uh, and, and with that, I won't bore you any longer. We will, I haven't set up the AMSAT shop yet, but we've got a number of uh, things in there, some new, some old. Um, the, the, the new one is this Getting Started book, which AMSAT North America have allowed us to reprint this side of the, the pond. I've only got about a dozen copies left, so if you want one of those, do, do pop in. But I'll try and get the things a bit more on display as the day wears on. Thank you very much. Back to the glamorous Martin. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, of course, you know, we're not expecting any fire alarms or anything like that. So should there be any noisy alarms, then please make your way quietly out to the front and we'll meet out in the car park. So with no further ado, I hand over to the chairman of the first session and uh, welcome to Barry. Thanks, Martin. Hi, I'm Barry Sanky, G7 RWY. I'm very pleased to host the first session this morning and to get things off to a start, as Martin was saying, we've got Chris Sanders joining us from SSTL to give a talk on SSTL, ILEOs, MEOs, GEOs and beyond. So this is looking into the future. So, Chris. And while he's there, just to embarrass him, I won't sit in the front row and glare at him. <laughs> so. Over to you, Chris. Thank you. Yes. That's it. Is it? Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Thanks. Well, good morning, everyone. Um, my name's Chris Saunders. I'm from uh, Martin said from SSTL, uh, just down the road. And today, I'm going to give you a talk on what we are doing, as it, as it says on the screen there, in low Earth orbit, medium Earth orbit, in geo, and then beyond geo. So. What I'll talk about today is just a brief update on SSTL, quick overview of who we are, and then some of the major projects we've got going at the moment. So as Martin's already mentioned, DMC3, but I'll also talk about some of our other missions, Carbonite, Novasar, former Sat7, as you can see there on the screen. And then I've got a few slides at the end on some new projects that we're doing that are a bit different from what we've done at SSTL before in the past. So one called Twinkle. And then I'll talk a bit about what we're doing regarding the Moon and a lunar communications program we're doing with the European Space Agency. 
So for those of you that don't know, I'm sure most of you do, but uh, SSTL, Surrey Satellite Technology Limited, we're a medium-sized space prime contractor and we're here in Guildford, just down the road. And we design, manufacture and do the operations of small satellites as well as we provide equipment, uh, subsystem cells and we do services. There's about 500 of us here in Guildford and in Borden. And we've got a small outfit in Colorado as well. Um, and we do kind of stuff from first concept, back of the envelope, trade-off studies, which is the kind of area that I work in, through to in all the operations, data processing. And the company tagline is changing the economics of space, and that we have been doing that for, uh, well, ever since the company's been uh, started, really. We provide high performance at low cost. And here's some numbers. We've had a satellite that's USAT-2 is still, still operational, been in orbit for 30 years. We've launched 47 satellites. For example, we, you know, our smallest satellite is three and a half kilos, which is a CubeSat. Over half a tonne was Jovi, so we do a, a whole range of different systems. Average about two and a half spacecraft per year over the, over the lifetime of the company. It's quite an enviable track record. So, I'll give you a quick update on our major projects. As Martin's already mentioned, DMC-3. Um, it was a first, really, for commercial Earth observation. So there's a Chinese company, 21st Century Aerospace, or 21AT, has leased 100% of the imaging capacity for us for uh, seven years. Uh, so they handle all the tasks in the data download and the image processing. And 21AT, a very successful company in China, using Earth observation data for urban planning, for agricultural assessment. Um, they do lots of different services that they've built off the back of Earth observation data. And the quality of the imagery they're getting from DMC3 is really helping them to build their business and to expand from the medium resolution data they had before into, in, in, into this high res. There's some technical details on the left there, which um, you obviously don't have to memorize every number there, but the key pertinent points are it's extremely agile spacecraft, so we can cover a lot of swath with the imager. It's a meter resolution in panchromatic, but it's also got a four meter multispectral uh, four channel capability as well. Uh, we can, as it says, there, we can do over 100,000 square kilometres throughput per day per spacecraft. And in, of course, in the constellation, there are three of them. So you're getting onto a third of a million square kilometres a day. And you can see that the spacecraft are being used quite hard already. So in May this year, there was almost 14,000 images captured. And that was over 7 million square kilometres, which is about 17 terabytes of data. So they're quite a significant throughput on, this, on, these, on these spacecraft. Uh, here's some imagery. Uh, you've seen these two already, but um, yeah, we are, we are getting a significant number of images down, but there are limitations on the ones that we can show you, I'm afraid. So you've seen these two already. But as Martin showed you in the picture of uh, London at the top, the resolution and the detail and the sharpness of the imagery is really, um, we're very pleased with that. So it's, it, and it's really, and, the, and so is the customer, thankfully. Alongside, you saw this picture before, but alongside the... Um, three DMC satellites last year, we also launched another satellite, which I've circled down here, which is called Carbonite. And that was a satellite that we built ourselves as an experimental demonstrator. Well, we funded it, built it in-house as an experimental satellite, built to see really how fast and how quick we could do something that would produce some useful data. So using low-cost optics and sensors, using spare parts, using, uh, you know, off as much off-the-shelf stuff as we got flight spares from previous missions, etc. The key point is we actually went and bought a commercial, you can see on the bottom there, a commercial Cassegrain astronomy telescope, repackaged it, put a commercial uh, machine vision sensor on the back, and, that's, and that was the main imaging payload. And it was built from the project kickoff to the flight, end of the flight readiness review was just over six months. And that was, as I said, launched on the same PSLV spacecraft. And here's an image from that. This is of Dubai. So as you can see, it's, it's obviously it's not the same spacecraft as DMC-3, but it's a significantly different price point than those kind of spacecraft. It's doing a, a different application. So we built this to try and show that you can have low-cost volume manufacture to produce sort of useful Earth observation data. And we're very pleased with that, and we're currently working on a follow-on. Novasar, as Martin mentioned, is a SAR spacecraft synthetic aperture radar uh, S in S-band that we're building at the moment. This is the flight model here. Uh, it's a collaborative project with Airbus in Portsmouth. Um, so Air Airbus is responsible for the payload. We're, we're doing the platform and the mission operations. It's got four modes, 
there's a strip map mode, Scansar, and then we've also got a, a, a maritime mode, which is deliberately, for those of you who know about SAR, it's, it's deliberately ambiguous. So you, it's not producing an image, but it, it tells you if there's something there or not a ship. So the advantage of that is that we can get a very wide swath of over 400 kilometers on the ground, which is very useful for maritime surveillance. It's about half a tonne, so it's quite a big spacecraft. And we've got a launch plan for this towards the end of the year. Uh, and it's, as you can see, with the kind of numbers we're here, it's, it's a sort of analogous, it's a synthetic aperture radar version of the disaster monitoring constellation. So it has similar type applications, agricultural monitoring, flood management, it's ice detection, uh, maritime surveillance, as I've mentioned. So we're quite excited about this. Obviously, this will be our first uh, SAR spacecraft. Another big project we've been working on is FORMSAT-7. This 